May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be always acceptable in thy sight, O Lord. Amen. Please be seated. So this morning, it would be really easy for me to sum up the readings. Have faith and trust in God and bear the fruits of discipleship. But I just can't pass up an opportunity for Bible study. <laughs> so the first readings today emphasize faith and trust in God. And with the added imagery of trees planted by streams of water who are bearing fruit, that faith and trust in God <coughs> bears fruit of actions. Well, then we have Paul's letter. Remember, Paul was trained as a Pharisee, so he has this wonderful roundabout argument, but eventually he leads us to believe in the resurrection. And the resurrection of Christ is our proof. And he is the first fruits of the resurrection. Now we're coming to the Gospel of Luke. One of the aspects about Bible study that I've really enjoyed is looking at the different focuses that each Gospel has. Each one has its own little spin on Jesus. And Luke's emphasis in this Gospel is on the kingdom of God and the implications of that kingdom on everyday people and everyday life. So this, his sermon on the plane is similar to Matthew's, and you might be more familiar with the, the Sermon on the Mount, but Luke's version is a little different, and it has a different emphasis. So just to kind of set you in the right place, just prior to this reading in Luke, Jesus has been making enemies with his teachings, his healing, working on the Sabbath, and associating with undesirable people. He goes, Jesus goes up to the mountain to pray. Now this is a really important setting because you remember that the mountain is where you encounter God. So this mountain represents communication with God. And I think when Jesus needs to discern how to proceed in his ministry, he seeks God in prayer. Jesus chooses his 12 apostles from among, from among this larger group of disciples. Now these were people who had all responded to Jesus by leaving everything behind to follow him. But he chooses 12 that will be his core group. <coughs> so now, Jesus comes down from encountering God. He comes down from being in communion with God to be on a level plane with this crowd of everyday people, bringing his message of the kingdom to everyday people in their everyday life. And then he begins his teachings. His focus is on discipleship, the responsibilities and consequences of that discipleship. Now, we are all disciples. So this applies to all of us, just as it did to those disciples long ago. <clears throat> so let's take a look at the crowd. This crowd is a real mixed bag of people. <laughs> Besides the 12 apostles specifically called by Jesus, there was the crowd of disciples who were followers who had already responded to Jesus. And Luke really makes a point of telling us about this crowd. There was a great crowd who had come from Judea and Jerusalem in the south. They were most likely Jews. Then people from the Phoenician cities of Tyre and Sidon in the northwest. Probably a mixture of Jews and Gentiles. So this was a crowd of people all the way from the north to the south, Jews and Gentiles alike. An all-encompassing group of everyday people. The curious and the already committed. 
Now this teaching consists of a set of blessings and corresponding woes. Jesus gives contrasts between different groups of people. There's a positive blessing for one group and a corresponding negative woe for the opposite group. Now Jesus was looking at his disciples as he teaches, but this is a teaching for all of this crowd. Jesus is defining the kingdom of God that he is bringing to the world. A kingdom that turns things upside down. He describes the nature of discipleship in that kingdom. And he addresses real, everyday conditions. Poverty. Hunger. Weeping and hatred. Jesus shows us a contrast between the present condition and the future reversal. A call to have faith that the outward appearances are not an indication of being of the kingdom of God. Now, we don't really need to seek poverty, rejection, and hardship. But oftentimes, adversity is what brings us closer to God. The security of wealth and personal well-being might lead us to believe that we can rely only on ourselves. Then Jesus reminds us about the prophets who were ridiculed for their message of faithfulness and integrity. They spoke the truth. While the disciples, like us, are called to live the truth. We are asked to faithfully live out God's call to care for the poor, the hungry, the rejected. God's truth is not always well received when self-interest is the priority and where wealth and status are valued. These verses teach us about discipleship, its present difficulties, and its spiritual rewards of the kingdom of God. And we are invited as disciples into that new kingdom with a new future, not defined by outward appearances. I love how our church year has brought us to this point. We prepared for and then celebrated the birth of a baby. Then Epiphany comes along and it brings us that aha moment of understanding just who that baby really is. And now we are preparing to face the question, what does that mean for us? Are we individually and as a community ready to embrace the blessings of discipleship? Are we willing to embrace the kingdom of God here and now and live out that kingdom in our everyday lives? Thank <laughs> you.